I've made a lot of hyper-realistic cakes in my life, but I have to say, I think the cake that I'm making here today is the most hyper-realistic cake I've ever made. My client requested that I create a hyper-realistic cake that looks like a piece of steak and mashed potatoes. They wanted to surprise their sister on her 30th birthday and put this cake in front of her and make her think that it's actually a real steak Yum. and she'll try to eat it and then she'll realize it's cake. What? So I knew I had to make it look insanely hyper-realistic but since that's one of my specialties, I was up for the challenge. My name is Melissa and I'm an artist. I create cakes, sculptures, and a lot of other cool things. And today I'm going to be making a ribeye steak on the bone and some mashed potatoes with gravy out of cake. But I'll let you see for yourself, let's make this cake. I made a template of the basic shape of the meat part of my steak. I cut that out of cake. So I don't have to do much carving, which is nice. I give it a layer of chocolate ganache to give it that strength and support to sculpt on top of. And then I add in a skewer and sculpt chocolate around it for the bone part of the steak. It was important to add that skewer for the bone to keep it nice and straight and supported. Otherwise, if the bone was just made from pure chocolate, it could bend and fall over around the edge of the plate and that wouldn't look good. I rolled out some modeling chocolate and covered the whole piece of the steak and went right ahead and started sculpting. The steak is divided up into three sections. The top part, which is the cap, the center, which is called the fillet, and then the bottom, which is called the tail, which is that attached to the bone on the end. So I divided those three sections up first, which broke up the proportions and gave me that structure that I needed to work around the piece of steak and made it feel less overwhelming. It was important that I get that accurate shape of the bone. It's a bit curved and it's got this like rocky like texture on top where the marrow is and it's very flat and rectangular. The steak is very organic looking. I had to build up all of that fat around the edges and make sure to nail that gritty grain like texture on top of the steak. I go in with my sculpting tool to build up that fat and make it very full of texture with lots of overlapping lines and different sizes of shapes pressed up against each other. So when you look away, you see one solid piece, but there's a lot of detail going on inside. To add to the organic naturalness of it, I have little pieces sort of sticking out on the sides, very abstract looking. It could be more loose with that because none of that looks the same on each steak. I use my Dresden tool on the top to create overlapping grain textured lines in different directions flowing against the cap, changing directions with the fillet, and then with the tail. And I want my steak to look grilled, so I make sure to make these very soft, indented grill lines for where it was pressed up against the grill when it was cooking. I was surprised that the steak did not take me that long to sculpt. Maybe four hours at most, which may sound like a lot, but compared to a lot of other things that I sculpt, that is not a lot of time. The most important part of the steak was the painting though, because that's what's gonna bring it to life and make it feel savory and cooked and grilled and delicious. First, I gave the entire meat section a light wash with some light brown with a hint of yellow in there to give it that golden tone. The bones get this deeper set brown where the marrow is, and then around it is gonna be a much lighter, paler yellow. Once I have my first layer of shading in, I go in with my medium tones. This is gonna be a darker medium brown. I start on the edges and work my way towards the center because the edges are gonna be the darkest. That's where it gets cooked the most on the edge. And then in the center, it's gonna stay a bit lighter because that's where it's more on the rawer side. And as I start painting, that's when all of that texture that I spent time sculpting starts to pop out. And I start realizing, okay, I'm definitely headed in a good direction here. This is really starting to feel like a steak to me, but how do I take it from cake steak to fully cooked, fresh off the grill steak? And that's all about the shading. I have to make sure to allow that bone to stay lighter than the rest of the area, that the marrow looks nice and dark, that the edges are nice and crisp and charred. Once I have all my medium tones in, I go in with my darkest tones to give it that depth, that it's really been charred and cooked on that grill. So I go in with a dark brown, making sure to paint over the outermost edges, the top edge of the bone, the top of the cap, and in those grill lines. Once I've got most of my shading in, it's time to make that cake shine. I want it to feel nice and wet, like it's juicy. So I have to add a layer of confectioner's glaze all around the top. 
and I add in some yellow brownish tones, emphasizing more yellow on those tones into the glaze as I paint it on. That golden hue that I'm adding with that glaze is gonna make it feel saucy and juicy, and it looks more yellow before I paint it on, but once I add in that golden yellow, it just takes the color of that brown steak to a deeper depth. It blends together really beautifully and makes it look super realistic. Now my steak also needs some pepper and salt because that's crucial when you're seasoning your meat. I chop up some dark chocolate to make my grind pepper grains and I take some already cooked isomalt and chop it up really fine for my crystal sugar. Mix it in with that confectioner's glaze and lightly brush it on top just in a few areas. And now my steak looks seasoned and delicious. I set my steak aside and now we've got to make our mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes were pretty simple. It's just one piece of cake that I cut out in an oval shape. I dig out the center of it a bit because we want to make sure we have room for that gravy. And then I take my buttercream, which I add a little bit of just plain vanilla cake crumbs to. So that way it looks like the potatoes have been mashed, but there's a few little pieces of potato still stuck in there. I don't want it to be a completely just pureed mashed potato. I want it to have a little bit of grit. I take my offset spatula and I gently press the buttercream up against my piece of cake in organic, natural way. So it looks like it's scooped on mashed potatoes to that plate. I made sure to leave a well in the center of the mashed potatoes and I added in my brown sugar sauce. I made this sauce with butter, brown sugar, and a little bit of flour, which thickened it up and made it look like some nice, thick gravy. I added my steak back onto that plate and wow, all of a sudden I had this beautiful meal right before my eyes. I really even shocked myself with how realistic this steak ended up looking. The wetness of that confectioner's glaze made it look really juicy, like it's fresh off the grill. And you can see how important all of that texture and shading was with the color to make it look hyper realistic. My clients were blown away with this cake and I think she was super surprised that it was actually cake when she cut into it. So my goal was totally accomplished and I was just so proud of how hyper-realistic I could make this cake look. I really even surprised myself a little bit. I love this cake so much that I went ahead and printed it and it's hanging in my kitchen at home so I can look at it all the time and feel inspired by the work I created. And it's so fun if people come over and see it and they're like, oh, that's a cool picture of steak and mashed potatoes. And I could say, hey, it's actually cake. And if you'd like to hang a picture of this steak and mashed potatoes cake in your home and shock your guests when they come over, you can do that now because I'm offering prints for sale and you can find the link below. If you enjoyed watching me create this steak cake, please give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe for so many more cool cake and art videos to come. Thank you so much for following along as I create this hyper-realistic steak and mashed potatoes cake and I'll see you in the next video.